Hi, I'm John the MedPot Engineer Termel, and this is Terry Parker's reply to the Crown Attorney's submissions on his argument that the recent Spetkopoulos case out of the Supreme Court of Canada um, means that the Crown's greatest fear has happened. That the law has been dead for the past six years, like it had been earlier dead for two years when we made him drop the 4,000 charges. They're going, oops, looks like it happened again, but for the last six years too. So, they had some pretty inane responses, and we're going to go through them all and have a good chuckle as we see what desperate ploys the Crown used to try and prove that the marijuana prohibition is still alive. But before I do that, I'm going to say a short, happy note from Rick Lacan, who wrote from northern Quebec. Now, he called a while ago, and around the time when we were talking about the judicial reviews against Health Canada, and uh, had mentioned that he was at 28 grams, which is about a pack of cigarettes a day, and like many other exemptees, but that Health Canada had called his lawyer, doctor and had talked the doctor into calling him in to switch back down for a 5 gram prescription. Now imagine going from 28 grams down to 5 grams. Well anyway, I told him not to submit a new form to demand a response to the original application with the 28 grams within 30 days using the 30 day ultimatum. Or he'd use John Termal in the background to organize a judicial review of why they're overruling his doctor's prescription and saying no. So, got a letter just this morning. It said, hello, John. How's it going down there? Rick from North Quebec. We talked on the phone a couple of times with me, you, and Mark Paquette. Okay, to make it short, I finally got my exemption card, 28 grams, like my doc asked, but had to send a second B form and told them that after 30 days, they knew what. And I got it because I called Deno and I told my story to the secretary and it was going to be 30 days. The next Saturday, it was the 27th. So I called and the day after, Mr. Bergeron called me back and told me he was sending it now. So I got it a couple of days late, but I have it now. So at least the 30-day I wrote ultimatum worked without me having to write up a judicial review of their decision to challenge your doctor's prescription behind the scenes. It always makes doubly nice to win through intimidation rather than in law. So, on to the Terry Parker case. He shouldn't even have to do this because the law's been dead for the last six years if the Crown is right. Filed 2484-08 Ontario Superior Court of Justice between Terence Parker, appellant, and Her Majesty the Queen, respondent. Reply to respondent supplementary written submissions. In the appeal of the order of Clements J. made December 7th, 2007. One, after the Crown brought the Svetkopoulos Federal Court of Appeal decision on failure in MMAR section 41b1 to this court's attention, appellant introduced the Supreme Court of Canada's final dismissal and enlightening background documentation. New facts make new supplementary submissions necessary for the court to have the full story. Nothing new. Two. The Crown wrote, The appellant's supplementary submissions are completely unnecessary. Both parties addressed the impact of the Svetkopoulos decision on February 17, 2009. And I answer, appellant has newly introduced the Crown memorandum describing the feared effect of the Svetkopoulos that needed to be stayed. Quote, paragraph 33. The court in R versus JP ruled that the combined effect of Parker and Hitzig meant there was no constitutionally valid marijuana possession offense between July 31st, 2001 and October 7, 2003. The Parker period, we'll call it. The date the MMAR were constitutionally rectified by the decision in Hitzig, Alan Young's resurrection of the law. Courts may construe the Federal Court of Appeals decision as creating a similar period of retrospective invalidity dating back to December 3rd, 2003, the date that Section 41B1 was reintroduced into the MMAR. Unquote. That's their fear. Appellant has newly noted the R versus Barron decision found in the Crown's documentation, which the Crown herein chose not to bring to this court's attention, in which Madam Justice Konigsberg, in paragraph 127 of her judgment, about grower limitations, ruled, 
127, adopting the reasoning in Hitzig and Svetkopoulos, further bolstered by the evidence before this court, I find section 41b1 and section 54.1 of the MMAR contrary to section 7 of the Charter. So the second MMAR failure in paragraph 127 about the grower malfunction in section 54 was left unchallenged by the Crown, who responded to her concerns in paragraph 94 and 97 about the lack of doctor participation, which the appellant didn't even raise. So, they answered the wrong question they didn't ask. Six, appellant newly compares the lapse of the stay of the Svetkopoulos effect out of the now functus officio Supreme Court of Canada being analogous to the lapse of the O'Leary stay of the Krieger invalidation of the Section 7 cultivation prohibition when the Alberta Court of Appeal became functus officio in 2003. Applies to cultivation too. All right, next. Nothing changes, the Crown says. Crown, the recent decision of the Supreme Court of Canada changes nothing relevant to this appeal. And we say it lifts the stay that prevented courts from construing, in the Crown's own words, the Federal Court of Appeal's decision as creating a similar period of retrospective invalidity dating back for six years to December 3rd, 2003, the date at which Section 41 was reintroduced into the MMAR, pursuant to the R versus JP ruling that the combined effect in Parker and Hitzig meant there was no constitutionally valid marijuana possession offense for two years between July 31st, 2001, Terry Parker Day, and October 7, 2003, Alan Young Day, the date the MMAR were constitutionally rectified by the decision in Hitzig. So we just reversed the Crown statement from earlier to make our point. The stay is now gone. What they feared has happened. MMAR not flawed in general, they argue. Crown, paragraph 3, the Federal Court of Appeal addressed only paragraph 41B1 of the Marijuana Access Regulations, finding that provision unconstitutional. The Barron decision addressed, we say, paragraphs 41B1 and 54.1. And this case also addresses the 60 to 1 odds of finding a doctor before Justice Tullock, Terry's bringing up. And the JP decision addressed four paragraphs, but not all. The Crown. The court did not address the constitutional validity of Section 4.1 of the CDSA in Svetkopoulos. And we say appellant concedes that York University Osgood Hall Law School professor Alan Young did not ask that the link feared by the Crown between the last six years being analogous to the Parker two years of invalidity be made that discovering a short in the MMAR exemption shorts out the CDSA prohibition. To argue that the appellant cannot ask that the feared analogy be made because Court Klutz Young failed to ask is not a reason. It has been left to appellant Terry Parker to invoke the Svetkopoulos effect, feared enough by the Crown to be stayed twice. Since this failure of Professor Young to make the JP link is cited in all the judgments raised by the Crown to argue the link does not exist, I'll henceforth dub it Paydna, P-A-Y-D-N-A conclusion. Professor Young did not ask. We'll see. Crown, 13, or the constitutionally of the MMAR scheme in general. So we didn't channel, challenge the scheme in general. We only challenged these three issues. And of course, we say the JP court ruled the CDSA prohibition was shorted out when it found four constitutional malfunctions in the MAR exemption without having to address the constitutionality of the MMAR scheme in general. Svetkopoulos found one flaw in section 41b1. Konigsberg, J and Barron addressed two flaws in both section 41b1 and 54.1. And appellant Terry Parker addresses a third MMAR malfunction in the long odds of finding a doctor. If JP did not have to address every problem with the whole MMAR scheme in general, appellant doesn't have to either. To say that the CDSA is not shorted out because only a few malfunctions have been discovered in the MMAR and not all is technically inane. 
The Crown, paragraph 15. Oh, no. As a result, the decision cannot result in the constitutional invalidity of section 4.1 of the CDSA, as suggested by the appellant. And we go paid nut again because Gunja Gilligan Young failed to ask. And because he failed to strike at the heart of the beast does not preclude Terry Parker from striking where no one has struck before. 